I was going to do this video outside, but the wind picked up, and then this guy decided to just mow his lawn, and that was just being very loud. So today we are going to have a book discussion on the novels, Mass Effects. Not that kind of discussion, but we are going to talk about the Mass Effect novels. I'm not going to go all into detail with the plot and all that. Uh, I just want to talk to you guys about what's going on in the novels so you know the connection that it has to Mass Effect 3 because they do have a connection and I think it's pretty important for those of you that don't want to read it uh, for you to know. The writer is Drew Carpatian and he's also a, one of the lead writers for the Mass Effect games. So whatever's written in the novels most likely will be uh, referred to in the games somehow. So the first two books, Revelation and Ascension, I think the main purpose for these two books is to introduce uh, the main characters. In Revelation, you are introduced to Kali Sanders, and in Ascension, Kali Sanders returns, and you're introduced to Paul Grayson. These two characters, I think, are the main ones, especially for Mass Effect 3, so I'm going to stick to talking about that. Um, if you guys want to know more about the books, I would recommend... Uh, reading it online, or um, just read the books. This one wasn't that good, so I would say don't read this one because it's actually pretty boring. I don't know if you guys remember this. In Mass Effect, Captain Anderson tells Shepard that he has some kind of a history with Saren, like in the beginning of Mass Effect. Well, um, that's what this book is about, is the history that Captain Anderson has with Saren. Uh, like I said, the only importance of this book is that it introduces the main character of the three books, Kali Sanders, and I'll tell you the importance of this name a little bit later. She's a scientist, and she's like really good at what she does. I think the most important thing about Ascension is uh, the introduction of Paul Grayson. He starts off as a Cerberus agent. He's like a hitman. Um, but he's not very happy with the position. He kind of doubts the reasonings behind uh, Cerberus. He agrees with the ideology, the whole uh, humanity first and uh, for the greater good type of thing. He has this conflict. Because his adopted daughter is kind of like a guinea pig uh, for Cerberus, because she has these incredible biotic powers, she's like an autistic savant. Um, she's really good in biotics, but she's... Uh, she has these like social problems. She doesn't really uh, She hasn't really developed very well when it comes to uh, being able to talk to someone or being around a lot of noise and stuff She gets really irritated. The elusive man is basically using her to make this super biotic. I guess you could kind of think of it like Jack um, I, I really found it similar to Jack so uh, That's Jillian uh, his Grayson's daughter so Jillian, um, I can't remember exactly how sh old she is, but I, she's between 10 and 13, something like that. So that's why Grayson has this whole like inner conflict uh, with Cerberus. In this book, Kali is like a mentor, or like I guess you could say like a counselor, in uh, her father's academy, uh, the Grissom Academy. And she works on this project called the Ascension Project. So they work really careful. They work really carefully with biotic children. Uh, so that's where Jillian comes into play. She's in that academy uh, while there is like another Cerberus agent in the academy without anybody knowing. Like he's a mole, uh, and he gives her injections that the elusive man uh, gives him so that he could inject the girl. Uh, to make her biotic abilities even stronger, but it kind of like messes with her brain. So it's only like making her worse uh, when it comes to her autism. Ka uh, Kali later finds this out, and her and the, basically like the principal of the school uh, take Jillian and leave. Uh, they're on the run for most of the book, and when Grayson finds out, he kind of gets pissed off and he goes after them. Uh, so this is when he's still part of Cerberus. He's like, I'm going to get them. He tells the elusive man, don't worry, I'm going to get them. Uh, he does end up getting them, but at the end he has a change of heart and decides to help Kali instead. Uh, he basically wants her to take his daughter somewhere safe and 
he knows that the elusive man is going to like want to cut his head off by doing this. So he just becomes like a fugitive, like a Cerberus fugitive. And he's on the run as well. Uh, so that's how this ends. Um, uh, Grayson leaves Cerberus and Kali and the principal dude take Jillian uh, off to someplace safe.